dinner. Okay, cool. Yes, uh, it sounds really great. It's it's just amazing to hear someone else play it. It's just wow, so oh, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and of course, I'm uh, I'm so intimately familiar with every single note chunker played because I wrote it out. So, <laughs> I feel like I so much. Um, better than I know most of my own music uh, in general. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, it sounds beautiful, and I think you're you're kind of taking the cue from Shankar's recording, which I think is great because it has to be a little malleable. And I think you've the like the pacing feels very good to me. So cool. that's excellent. Um, the only I guess. There are maybe two kind of guiding things that I would say. One mm -hmm. is that the grace notes in um, so like no, something like ah, the grace notes shouldn't like. There's a kind of a psychological thing that Western musicians do where we see a note on the page and we're like, okay, I need that note to sound. It almost feels like it's just uh, like the grace notes almost feel like throwaways, and and they should be just lighter and less articulated in whatever sense that means to you. I'm not sure how that. Okay translates to what you do, but they, they, there's a few times where I feel like they might be, like for example, going into C, just try that mm -hmm. little upbeat. <laughs> Yeah, nice. even that feels a little bit better. Yeah, just just okay. as as much as you can downplay those grace notes, and they're just like because it'll sound in when I'm singing, it doesn't. It mm -hmm. sounds like ah, 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 so it's almost like I'm doing a glottal yes. attack, and I have to mm -hmm. give you that note because I can't just tell you to attack it glottally. So it won't work the same way. So that's 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 why it's there. But it should feel more like the sound of the attack than the like that you're articulating a grace note. An actual pitch that, yeah. well, not, but yeah, okay. It's not just, not as equal as the main, as the main note. Exactly, exactly. it sounds i mean you're a great clarinetist clearly so this mm -hmm. is awesome Trying. and uh neil you're inspiring me to want to actually do a piano reduction of this uh <laughs> i need to do it eventually it's just one of these days um you know if you do so it is piano reduction for piano left hand <laughs> <laughs> yes the Ravel concerto and you know yeah, I mean, it sounds beautiful, and the the passages sound so fluent. I mean, you must have like really done some serious work on this because it sounds great, and it's also like I can tell that you really kind of uh, listen to Shankar's recording because there's so much that you just can't convey on a page. Like it's like I've done my best here to like write some notes <laughs> on a page, but it's like there's just so much you have to get from from feeling the the feeling of it, and I really feel like you're capturing it. So I mean, you should feel totally confident about um, the performance, and I'm excited to like hear how it sounds with an orchestra. Me too. Me too. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're bringing this piece into the world in a way that it just hasn't existed before. So it's, I know mm -hmm. there's just probably so many questions about like very specific things of, of how things work, but I, I feel like you should trust your instinct because you have a really, really good instinct for this piece. But, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. So, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Neil, anything additional? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's all, it's all pretty clear. I mean, the hard, I think the hardest thing for the orchestra would be getting the feeling of those grace notes in the first movement but john can always play his for them to right. sort of give them the sense because there are places where they where they have some of the same figures that he does and if it's yeah. not coming through clearly then he can show them so that would be well and that's what the piece was actually designed to do because like it when i had shankar i was like okay well shankar has to play it first and the orchestra can then hear and imitate it if, if they're imitating right after then they'll be able to hear and then imitate right back yeah. so that was part of the 
plan for the piece anyway. So, yeah. And it's interesting because I think like, you know, John, now at this point, you're going to have a much uh, more in-depth sense of how this works because you've listened to it and, you know, practiced it so many times. Um, but it'll be interesting because what will happen is that the orchestra, it will not quite sound as Hindustani in the orchestra as it will with you. And so you'll get to hear these two different versions of things, one that is actually a little bit more Western. And that's part of the intention too. So, you know, for like, say, okay, like say there was an amazing orchestra in India that was doing this and they had all the training, it would sound completely different than it would sound with the Western orchestra. And like, that's the point, right? That like everyone speaks this piece with their own accent a little bit. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, that was the thing is like, I just don't want to make it sound like Mozart, you know, I mean, right. like, it <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I was like, <laughs> check, you can check that one off. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, that's yeah. good. That's good. But, it, but it also has, you know, like a, a, a tone of a Western clarinetist playing it, which is also important, right? Because it's like mm -hmm. that it should be the center of your training too. So I think you're doing a great job. I think this is awesome. Okay. Thank you so much.